So this is a quick explanation about your third study in color inventory. Your first study was replicating the proportionate use of color from your graphic image into a graph. The second was taking a natural image, and I showed this um, succulent with flowers, and replicating the color scheme but in a non-proportionate use, right? So you're trying to manipulate the colors to look different than the image by changing scale and proportion. The third is about looking at an image, and you can use your natural object image from the second study, or you could take your own image. Um, landscapes are really beautiful for this image. Um, you can see in the example of color inventory, that's what I used. But I'll use this image to show you the difference in, of proportion. So the third study is equal proportion. So looking at an image and representing those colors with equality. And what you'll start to see is by changing proportions all from the same color scheme, you can get the appearance of, of multiple palettes. And that's really useful. Uh, it's a color pattern that can help distinguish one section of the design from another, but still using and ma maintaining a limited color palette. So by using that one color palette with great diversity, you're gonna get more possibility in the design, okay? You're gonna get more variety in your design just through color usage. So let's, let's attack this image through equal proportions. So you're gonna take your image and you're gonna create a bar a step bar graph with as many colors as you can get from the photo that's representative. The first choice that you're going to have to make is what step um, gradation that you want to create. You have four choices because every color has four traits. You can step this chart according to value and move light to dark. You can step this chart by saturation, moving from most saturated to least saturated. You could step this through hues and arrange the colors according to the rainbow. Uh, and then you could also group in two sections um, your temperatures in this image. Okay, so the first one I'm going to show you is value. It's probably the easiest one. So when you're starting, the first thing you're going to want to do is create a bar. So that's what I've done here. Um, once you have that bar, you can copy and paste it. So we can copy, paste, and I have another bar that's exactly the same size as the previous. And you're going to want to line these up. and maintain the spacing in between because what we want is a representation of your colors in the most equal fashion. So your bars need to be the same size and they should be placed in a central location through your image. So once you have this bar, if I was doing value, I would take my dropper and try to identify the next value up. So let's say we go to that background gray and just paint drop it. So I kind of feel like that could be a little bit more of a step Okay, and then what you'll do is copy and paste that bar and then go to the next value. I'm using my arrows for small shifting. Okay, so let me get rid of these two. And what I'm going to do is kind of show you I've already established these bars. Um, so this one is a value scale. So this scale is the same color scheme as to the right, where we used the colors in a non-proportionate way to the photo. And this one, I'm using the colors, but in equal way. I'm giving each of the colors equal uh, amount and proportion of this image. And it changes the color usage. You see the colors in a very different manner. Um, you also learn a lot about your color scheme by doing equal colors um, charting. You get a sense of how the saturated colors are grouping 
um, it looks like they're kind of grouping here and here. And then you've got your shades and your tints grouping. Um, and this can be useful, a useful way to start any painting. So a lot of designers and artists will do this sampling of, of images as a way to record a palette they might want to use. So if they have a client or an idea that is about, let's say, natural colors, they might choose a natural object or photo and pull from that photo to gather an interesting color palette. Okay, it's like it's a way of looking towards life to get interesting color um, choices. And then here you can see what this does is creates a comparison model. You really compare the, the colors um, to each other at, because they are of equal proportion. So this is a value scale and that would be one of your options. Okay, now I could rearrange these into a, a hue or temperature or saturation. So if we were to do that, this would look very different. Um, I would probably have to choose the most saturated colors towards the one end of the spectrum, right? So it's going to be your pinks, right here, your oranges, your yellow, and your pink, okay? Um, and then we would s separate these moving from most saturated to least. So what this will do if we do this is probably group your shades and tints together um, at, towards the end of the, of the chart and the saturated colors sort of towards the top and your mid-tones are going to become these mid-saturated colors. Okay. Hue would once again reorganize this very differently. We, we might do Roy G. Biff and try to do our best to identify um, the hue of each of these bars. And, and that's going to be a challenging one. For instance, this could be seen as a purple or a pink. So you really have to start identifying um, the quality of each color, not reliant on value or saturation, but just the hue and put them into a sort of an Roy G. Biv. Okay, so you have that choice. You, you are welcome to do any one of those four charts um, and you may use any photo. Okay, so that is the third study in color inventory.